Hello and welcome to Rebs Tries It. So I have a Duolingo streak of over 900 days and I still haven't completed Duolingo and it's time to change that. So first off, I might be wondering why I have that long a streak and not have completed it. I have been doing quite a few alphabet lessons just to keep the streak going and I've decided that I really want to take the time to complete what is the Duolingo path, formerly called the Duolingo tree. So I've recently got Duolingo Plus, which means I can make unlimited mistakes on lessons which means I don't ever have to worry about watching adverts. So I'm gonna really try and push through it and complete Duolingo. I'm completing it for the Greek language, which is also why I've had such a long streak and not really completed it because it's got alphabet lessons, which allowed me to revamp the alphabet and that would count towards my streak of having to do a lesson on part of the path. Also Duolingo periodically updates and I was actually pretty far through the tree before they updated to the path method, which set me back a fair bit. So where are we starting from in Duolingo for myself? Now there are four terms you need to learn here. First, sections. Sections are different parts of a path entirely and there are five sections that need to be completed. I have currently completed two of them, so I'm on the third section and I believe the final one might be a written one, so I'm currently between 20-25% through and I'm just at the beginning of the third section. The next term to know is units. So within each section, there are a different number of units. So for the Greek language, in the first section, there was eight units. In the second section, there were 20 units. In the third section, there are 21. And in the fourth section, there are 12. Finally, in the fifth section, there are six. And these are apparently different daily revision lessons. So unit wise, I've already completed the first section, so eight units, the second section, so 20 units. And I'm currently 13 units through the third section. This is about 30 units through a total of around 61 in the course. It's only taken me the best part of two and a half years. <laughs> then units, there are multiple levels. So on the app, those look like the different circles that make up the path. And there's probably about eight to 10 per each unit. And then within each of those levels, there is then lessons. And they say on average, there's around five lessons for each of the levels. So I don't have an exact count of how many that would be, but I did see online that on the path I'm on with Greek, there's 525 levels and 2,479 lessons that need to be completed. And maximum, I think I'm halfway through. This doesn't include going to legendary on any levels. Potentially quite daunting, but I'll update you as I go. Hopefully when I've all finished, I'll then be able to let you know if I thought it improved my Greek. So time to get to it. Okay, a quick update on how it's going. I am now just moved on to unit five. I have actually started to try and test out of units that I am more familiar with. So I tested out of unit three, for example. Testing out basically means you go to the end of the unit. So down, down here, and then I can go to test out of the unit. I get five lives across the top, which are mis basically mistakes that I can possibly make. And it starts off usually just in definitions of word, then it gets into more complicated sentences. So I've been doing that for a couple of units. At the each unit, there's this button here, which kind of gives a description of what's in the unit and the sentences. So because I'm familiar with some of the language already from having got a fair bit through the course, I'm doing that. And if there's things I need to revise, I am revising them. But I have started to find that actually some of the lessons can get a bit repetitive. So I'm just having a quick go at them and then testing out to try and get through this a little bit faster. I won't do it once it starts getting too tricky, but for some of it, I have just been able to do this. Otherwise, progressing fairly well. So I completed three more units and I'm gonna keep going. One eternity later. Okay, so I've got to some parts where it's a bit harder. So I've just been working my way through the lessons. The weekend, I've probably spent around six hours today already working my way through lessons. And honestly, it's quite tiring. And sometimes it's quite repetitive. It's just about learning a word. And I think it would probably be more active to learn it via flashcards than in the full sentence version, but I'm getting there. Um, probably over halfway through now and just continuing to work through, but I'm very ready to have uh, finished this course. <laughs> okay, so I'm currently working my way through Duolingo and I'm currently doing it on the laptop and I've just looked at my screen and I'm three steps away. So I'll give you a quick look, but I think we might be finishing it today or tomorrow. That's me and I've got to go to there. I just finished Duolingo, um, super satisfied, just did the final lesson and now I've done all of section one which they're calling rookie, section two explorer, section three traveller and section four champion and now as suspected section five is just a daily refresh of what looks like six lessons 
yeah, in almost a star formation that I can do every day. So very happy I finished the tree. Um, it's currently about 10 p.m. on Sunday, so probably gonna get some rest before work tomorrow. I'll definitely collect my thoughts on pros, cons, thoughts on Duolingo, and give you more of a rundown now that I've completed the entire course and tree. So my final thoughts. I want to start by disclaiming that I do think your experience with Duolingo depends firstly on your learning style and secondly on the amount of time you can put into it. So I've got six pros and six cons which I'm going to check you through and then my final conclusion. So to start off with the pros, the first and most obvious one is that it's completely free. So an easy way to get started with language learning. Secondly, it's got a really good way of gamifying language learning, which I think is a good way to get you into language learning and form those habits. And thirdly, because of that, it's a great way to learn vocab and in languages where there are different alphabets, the alphabet. There are also some languages such as Spanish where the course is more fleshed out and there are additional exercises like comprehension. Fourthly, it's really portable so you can learn languages on the go, although I must know the offline mode needs some improvement. Fifthly linked to that portability is there are bite-sized lessons. This can be a con as well, but it makes it easy to pick up for maybe two, three, five minutes and do a little bit of language learning whilst on the go. And my final pro is that it's actually pretty adaptive. So you'll have questions come back which are wrong and maybe made slightly easier, such as having gap filling rather than typing in what the word is to begin with which really helps cement the things that you're struggling with, which you don't always get in traditional textbooks. And now for the cons. So similar to the first pro, although it is free, there are a lot of adverts and there's this heart system, which can be pretty frustrating if you don't have Super Duolingo, which I understand because it's a commercial model, but they're really trying to get you hooked. But it really can dampen learning when you have to either retake a lesson or watch an advert if you make five mistakes, or at the end of a lesson, you have to watch a 10 second advert for Super Duolingo, which definitely deterred me when I didn't have Super Duolingo. Secondly, and I found I definitely did this, is that you can move into just maintaining your streak, which can be pretty energy draining and you could spend the time doing more fruitful learning. And I often found that even though I was inspired to learn the language, when I had to go on to maintain the streak, I just did that and then I stopped rather than going because I really wanted to learn. And I think that meant that my enthusiasm definitely decreased over time, even though it helped build a good habit. Thirdly, and I think this is super important for some languages, is the grammar is definitely lacking. Yes, there are explanations which help describe what the grammar is, but I do think that's significantly lack lacking. And when I was learning Greek, which is a very heavy grammatical language, if I didn't have the aid of additional textbooks, I think I'd have really struggled to understand why things were a certain way. Fourthly, although it's very good for grammar, the sentences are not always useful. And it's not really focused on giving you common phrases whilst traveling. And some of them can be pretty nonsensical. I think often I saw things like the pink carrot. And it is just an example. Obviously, it's a good way of learning colors. But I just think there are many sentences in there which weren't particularly useful. And more useful phrases might be, for example, how much is the bill? Or where can I find the bus stop? Which, aren't in, which weren't in the course that I was taking. And then my final two cons are interlinked. So I don't think it's great for advanced learners and that you can use this alone. At some point you will need other resources such as a tutor or a native language speaker just because some aspects are really lacking such as speaking and conversation understandably given what it's meant to do. And finally I do think that there's a potentially a slight lack of feedback so if you're incorrect it won't always tell you why you're incorrect. Now there used to be a feature that you could click on a little icon that would then go to a discussion where often people would have the same mistake or question as you but I think that's been rolled back and they got rid of it and they revamped the courses and honestly that makes it pretty hard to understand what you're doing right and wrong so you can actually go more trial and error than you should when learning a language which means I do think you need to have some other resources um, to help you really understand what's going on with the languages and make sure that you're understanding the reasons why things are the way they are which can make language learning a lot easier. So overall I think it's a useful tool when learning languages and it really could be a good tool in your toolkit especially if you're struggling on vocab or just getting started or trying to form some habits for the language and if gamification really works for you However, I don't think it should be used alone for language learning. I think there are lots of other tools and resources you should use on to help create a holistic education when you're learning languages. I'm happy to do another video which goes into all the different tools and resources that I've used when learning languages to help create this holistic environment in which to learn language. 
So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. And do let me know if it'd be useful to do a reviewing collection of resources that I recommend for language learning. And see you in the next video.